Hello and welcome back fellow PowerShell engineers. We are now going to go over how to use GitHub Copilot, specifically the Visual Studio Code extension to generate code for you. So let's go ahead and if you don't know where to find it, it's in the Visual Studio Code marketplace. You can follow this link here or you could just Google GitHub Copilot Visual Studio Code extension and go ahead and give it an install. And let's go ahead and continue. And it's going to try to launch it with Visual Studio Code. Now, I do want to note that this does cost $10 per month to be able to run. And I already have this account set up through my GitHub account. So you will have to set this up with a, uh, there's a free trial, but you will have to set this up uh, with your credit card or PayPal to be able to get it to work. So let's go ahead and open it with Visual Studio Code. And we will install it here. Let's uh, go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. All right. So after it's installed, we'll have to go ahead and use or go ahead and authenticate with GitHub. So we will allow that. And of course, if you already had the GitHub uh, extension installed, you would have that, but I don't on this particular machine that I'm using this on. That said, I think we're good. So let's go ahead and make a new PowerShell script. It says text file, but we'll go ahead and make a new PowerShell script. And what we'll do is you'll notice that we can, uh, it's prompting us to use the control I to ask GitHub Copilot chat to do something. So we can do that and let's go ahead and press control I. Let's ask it, give me a PowerShell array with the first 10 Pokemon from Jodo. So I'm obviously using one of my favorite examples from a game that I love, Pokemon, and Jodo is a particular region of that. So I'm just using that to demonstrate how specific we can get. And you'll see that it's thinking Jodo Pokemon, and it gives us the first 10 in the array, which is pretty sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And let's go ahead and look, if you'll see this already, actually, uh, this is what I was going to have it do. Build a loop using for each object. It's actually suggesting it right now. So what we can do is tab complete that. All I did was press tab. And now it's given me that loop. So very, very cool. And it's prompting me to do comments but I don't actually need to do those we'll just leave it like that and it's still prompting the exact same thing so what I want to do now actually let's just give this a run just to validate that this works and I'm going to do control plus 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 just to make everything a little bit bigger here so we can see it a little bit better so let's go up here and do a run. We see that it runs, loads the array, and then it runs, it actually pipes the Pokemon array to the for each object group and writes the name of each one of them. That's pretty sweet, but what if we wanted to refactor this code? And then also too, you'll notice I made a comment file path on title one because I haven't even actually saved this yet. So let's highlight it and do a control I, and let's ask the GitHub Copilot to make this into a custom function. Let's see what it gives us. I'm gonna lower this a little bit and scroll back up. I'm actually gonna zoom out too so we can see this a little bit better. So here's our existing code 
it's got the Pokemon array and the uh, the array being piped to the for each object. Well, now it's made a function called get Chodo Pokemon that's going to take that array inside of the function and then re and then run the for each loop. So that way, if we want to call this over and over again, for whatever reason may, we may want to do that, we can just initiate the get Jodo Pokemon, get dash Jodo Pokemon function. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that because it's exactly what I wanted it to do. And now, so we'll go back to our understanding of functions. If we were to just run this right now, it wouldn't do anything. I pressed enter and you'll notice that the GitHub Copilot has suggested that we invoke the get Chodo Pokemon. That's what it's guessing we'd like to do. And then it's putting the comments in there, but I don't want to have those. So, or the tick marks, I should say. And let's go ahead and run it. And we see it does the exact same thing, but now this is a reusable function that we can use to loop through this particular array. So we generated all of this, not actually typing any code, we generated it all using GitHub Copilot, which is able to assess what we're typing in our commands, in our comments, to generate more code and also we can prompt it for more, more code as well. So that's about it for this, uh, this video. We will see you in the next video. Thank you guys so much. And then also thank you to everybody who was at the Michigan Association of Educational Data Systems Conference in Traverse City, Michigan, where I presented on PowerShell Artificial Intelligence. It was a very great session. I hope we learned a lot about this and we did cover using the GitHub Copilot. So I'm going to be making more artificial intelligence videos moving forward so you guys can see the amazing tools that are available uh, with related to PowerShell, Visual Studio Code, and just using AI to make great things. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next video.